An Overly Considerate Friend by the Friend Cakes Read by Mika It started one cold night at the end of November. Or maybe early December. James was never good at keeping track of anything. As captain, James had Gryffindor practicing three nights a week to make sure they beat Slytherin for the Interhouse Quidditch Cup. It was his last chance at it. He needed it. It had to have been some time before winter break, for it was too cold to be in the air without a warming charm, but there had not yet been snow on the ground. The bitter harshness of the wind through the empty pitch deterred all from lounging or studying in the stands. Except one. James noticed the pale boy with dark curls sitting in the shadows. Even from a distance, James could tell the shivering boy was Regulus Black. Not wanting to disturb practice and start a fight, James didn't point out the shadow in the stands to Sirius. They had practice to worry about, and Sirius was never the type to just let something go, even for an hour. If he realized his little brother was spying on him, well, there would probably be a dramatic tantrum of epic proportions. Actually, there was no probably about it, which is why James kept quiet. It was only one practice. It wouldn't hurt to let it slide. Yet, two days later, there Regulus was, once again, shivering in the cold. He was deep in the shadows of the stand, Slytherin's scarf wrapped so tight it might as well have been strangling the poor boy. He seemed to be hiding from both the wind and the Gryffindors, but James's brown hair found the curly black hair easily. It was very nice curly black hair. Hard to miss, even in the shadows especially if you were looking for it. Which James was, for Quidditch reasons, of course. It was only two practices. It didn't mean anything. Ever since Regulus was sorted into Slytherin, the contention between Sirius and his younger brother was either loud and shouty or quiet and ignoring. The loud part always came from Sirius, James was quite sure Regulus didn't even know how to shout, even if he did want to raise his voice. It seemed like nothing the younger of the two did was ever right in Sirius's eyes. Pretentious brat was usually the insult Sirius said under his breath whenever they crossed paths in the halls. James had never seen this firsthand. Regulus was always rather meek and submissive whenever they had interacted. Which was not much, but of course, he would take Sirius's word over anything. It had been two weeks. Regulus had to be spying. James decided he'd give it the weekend. If Regulus showed up on Monday, then he would say something. Probably. He'd think about it, at least. On Monday... Regulus was back in his spot. He seemed to have stopped shivering, possibly finally perfecting a warming charm, but still looked cold and sullen in the shadows, as he leaned against a wooden post and kept his eyes glued on the Gryffindor players. James's stomach lurched so hard he dropped the quaffle. Fuck. He couldn't not tell Sirius about the Slytherin spy, right? You understand he wouldn't take it very well, Rima said, from behind a book after James explained the situation. Regulus had been at every Gryffindor practice for the past two, maybe three weeks. Again, James could barely keep track of the glasses on his face, let alone complicated things like time or the date. There was never anyone else from the team accompanying the little Slytherin, and he was always gone before they left the locker rooms. There was no doubt in James's mind that Regulus was mentally recording their plays to take back to his teammates. Well, some doubt, which is why he sought out Remus's advice. But the only thing he didn't truly understand was why Slytherin would send their Seeker. Though plays including the Seeker were important, they were far and few between, seeing as the Seeker needed their full attention on finding the Snitch. The only explanation was either Regulus was either in trouble with his teammates, 
or it was just a hazing ritual for being the smallest player on the team. Or, well, if he were on Gryffindor, it would have been both. Come to think of it, it was probably both. I figured as much. On a scale of one to that time he found out we made out in third year, how badly do you think? James asked, throwing a quaffle up into the air and catching it with one hand again and again. Somewhere between angry I was your first kiss with a boy instead of him and pissed that he wasn't there to watch, Remus hummed, and peered up from behind his book at the broody boy laying on the couch across from him. Remus's golden eyes followed the quaffle, and each thunk when it hit James made him cringe. It was too close to the full moon for this. Shite. I was hoping it'd be closer to crying for not being told for an entire year, James groaned. He threw the quaffle up higher, and it came down with an even louder thunk. Can you not? Remus asked, nodding to the ball. James's cheeks heated from being scalded, and put the ball down. It didn't help his nervous energy that now transferred to his leg, that he bounced. Remus sighed. There was no way he was going to get out of this conversation. Have you tried talking to him? Remus ventured. He was getting a migraine. Obviously not. That's why I've come to you for advice, James quipped, running his hand through his hair and messing it up even more. Fuck, Mooney. You're supposed to be the smart one. James rolled his eyes. Remus pinched the bridge of his nose with a groan. Not serious, you idiot. Regulus. Have you tried talking to him? Remus tried again. Way too close to the full moon for this. The cute kid's normally gone by the time we're finished, James shrugged. He had thought about confronting the other boy, but it always left his mind after practice. Well, mostly. Ah, oh, yes. It'll be quite hard to find any other time. No idea where he lives or eats or studies. Wish we all lived inside one huge castle together and shared a library. Oh, wait. Remus deadpanned, with an eye roll, then went back to trying to read. Trying being the operative part, seeing as James had no plans in allowing that just yet. You know what, Mooney? I hear your sarcasm, and I'm choosing to ignore how much it's turning me on, the chaser admonished. He couldn't take it. His leg bouncing wasn't enough. He started to throw the quaffle up again. Remus shot him wolf eye daggers from across the room. Please spare me. I can only handle dating one drama queen at a time, Remus deadpanned. I like to think of myself more as an overly considerate friend, James hummed. He wondered where the drama queen was anyway. Probably napping. Maybe he should wake him up to go for a run to get rid of this anxious energy. Instead of doing the proper thing, like actually talking to him or Regulus. Sure, you keep thinking that, Remus scoffed. Then, as if reading James's mind, added, You should speak to Regulus. Fine, James groaned, and rolled off the couch onto his feet. He'd do it now before he lost his nerve, or accidentally let it slip to Sirius, which he was prone to do when he was nervous, or drunk, or drunk and nervous. That was how Sirius had found out about the kiss. Sometimes he really needed someone to shut his mouth for him. And do not hit on him, Remus scolded him, just as he was about to exit the common room. Mooney, you wound me, James gasped, placing his hand over his heart. I'd never. Cute git. Don't think I didn't notice prongs, Remus warned. Fuck. He had said that, hadn't he? 
James responded by pretending he hadn't heard anything, and slipping out of the common room as Lily and her friends came inside. She still hadn't spoken to him since they'd broken up. Which, you know, fair. He had stood her up on her birthday. Accidentally, of course, it had been a really bad full moon. He was still missing part of an antler. Next time, he would go to Peter. Wormy was much better at advice. He would just nod along, say yes and agree with everything James was saying. He wouldn't have suggested that James trapeze all the way to the library to go find Regulus Black. Honestly, he wasn't even sure the last time he'd been in the library. Come to think of it, he might have even been banned from entering. With his hands shoved in his pockets, he headed down. James walked through the shelves, looking for any hint of green. He found a table full of Slytherins, all gathered around and talking excitedly, that promptly shut up when they noticed him leering. Yes? A girl asked, raising her eyebrow and looking him over with contempt. James pushed his glasses up his nose and ran his hand through his hair since girls usually adored that. He also bought time to skim through all the faces at the table for Regulus. Surprisingly, the spy was not at the table at all. I'm looking for Regulus. Black. Regulus Black. He fumbled over his words. Oh, him. She rolled her eyes. He sits in the back by himself. Loser. James had never hit a girl before in his life. Well, unless you count on the Quidditch pitch, but that was usually more of an elbow or a tackle to get the quaffle. It was for the game. He even usually said sorry afterwards. And maybe asked her on a date. But that wasn't the point, though. The point was that, on two feet and not high in the air, he had never hit a girl before. Yet this one was making him want to. Rather badly, in fact. Thanks, James muttered, keeping his fists clenched at his side and wandering further into the book cave of doom and despair. That had a better ring to it than library, didn't it? Certainly more fitting, as the lights grew dimmer and things turned out almost eerily quiet. But there he was, sitting alone at the furthest table in the back. The cute brat. A pretentious git. That wasn't it, but it worked just as well. Regulus looked up from his parchment, and his questioning eyes grew the size of saucers as he processed the older boy in front of him. James gave him a little salute as hello, and the boy just continued to stare. He was like a deer in headlights, which was comical given James was technically the deer, stag, really. And Regulus's eyes were practically the size of headlights. They were a much deeper, velvety shade than Sirius's eyes. Rather gorgeous, actually. Fuck. Thank Godric werewolves couldn't hear thoughts. Silence pulsed around them. Honestly, the library truly was creepy. How could anyone like being here when there were places like not here? James coughed. <coughs> uh, can I sit? Regulus nodded. Well, he moved, so at least there was some progress. James sat in the chair at the corner, next to Regulus, and leaned back into it, running his hand through his hair. This time it was self-consciously, and not in an attempt to win Regulus's affection. Well, mostly not that. James did what was in his mother's top three most hated things to do at a table. Leaned back onto the two back legs of his chair. The other two were charming his tea into whiskey and pretending to barf when she served peas. The order depended on the day and the meal being served. 
I saw you spying on our Quidditch practice, James said offhandedly. He planned to seem nonchalant, barely bothered, and then pounce and demand the sweet-looking garden snake stop spying on them. Regulus suddenly composed himself. Not even that, he looked disgusted. He rolled his eyes and started writing on his parchment again. I was not spying on you. Ravenclaw maybe, but Gryffindor? As if. Oh, there was the pretentious brat Sirius always talked about. Got it. James slammed down on all four legs of his chair and bent over the table to pluck the quill right out of the other boy's hand. I've seen you at every practice for the last three... two... three weeks. No one would purposefully sit in the bitter cold unless they were spying. Unless they're trying to freeze to death, Regulus countered, raising a dark eyebrow. Maybe I'm trying to die. Well, James wasn't expecting that retort. Uh, uh, were you trying to... I mean, trying to die? At our practice? Regulus rolled his eyes yet again, in a way that made James wonder if he practiced in front of the mirror to get that annoying look so perfect, while still keeping his features so handsome, and honestly, James, the boy just said he was trying to die. No, Regulus snapped. Well, thank Merlin. And I wasn't spying either. But I will stop attending your stupid practices. You can tell Sirius next time he's got an issue with me, he can send an owl. I don't need his messenger attacking me in the library. Regulus said swiping back his quill from James and dipping it in his inkwell to go back to writing. James once again swiped it back. Regulus glared, but it wasn't all that threatening with such a smooth and perfect jawline and lips that focused James. First of all, I'm not his fucking messenger. And second, Sirius didn't send me. He doesn't even know. And third, this is not an attack, James said confidently. It was a bit of an attack, or had planned to be, but obviously James had lost the plot. Oh. Regulus paled. Yeah. Oh. James felt victorious and steamrolled on. So if you weren't spying or trying to freeze to death, what were you doing out there? He leaned back in his chair and crossed his arms wriggling his eyebrows. Why do you care? Regulus asked genuinely. He stared at James for a moment, his slick composure dropping as something trickled through his brain. James had seen that sort of expression on Remus when he made decisions on what to reveal and what to exclude when it came to his health or parents or just about anything considered private. Which was basically everything. James was going to have to pick his words carefully, or this could be a futile exercise. You're my best mate's little brother, so of course I care about you. James hedged, sounding so sincere his mother would cry. Honestly, he was so good at this that they ought to give him a medal. Liar, Regulus snapped and James's medal was quickly revoked. A wall went up, and Regulus quickly snatched the quill back. He really did have Seeker's reflexes. They'd have to watch out for that at the game. Potter, you don't give a fuck about me, and I'm positive neither does Sirius. Did he just say fuck me? No, fuck about me. God, why was his mouth so adorable when saying fuck? Well, give me a reason to care. James huffed. Now he was just getting annoyed. Mostly at himself and the way he was thinking about those lips saying fuck in a different context, but Regulus didn't need to know that. 
Fine. I heard Sirius moved out of your house this summer into his own place. I wanted to ask... I was just thinking maybe... Never mind. I don't know why I'm telling you this. Regulus shook his head, causing some of his curls to fall from the bun pinned at the back of his head with a silver rose. They had to be soft to fall out of their place so easily. Because I care. Honest to Godric. Honest to Salazar? Fuck, no, sorry, I can't say that. Feels wrong. But you get what I mean, James said. Because now he did actually care. It sounded like Regulus had a reason. Had something deep and heartbreaking that he couldn't tell anyone. Suddenly, James wanted to be that someone. I wanted to ask Sirius if I could stay with him for the holidays, but every time between practice finishing and him coming out of the locker room, I chickened out. I'm a coward. Every time. Are you happy now? Regulus glared. He looked as threatening as a wet kitten. Oh. Yeah, oh, because now James felt like a bloody jerk assuming Regulus was spying on his dumb, pathetic Quidditch when he just wanted to spend the holidays with his brother that he was too nervous to even ask. Oh, indeed. You don't want to be with your parents? No, they're awful. Ever since Sirius left, my mother gets so angry, she... And my father's been trying to... I think he wants to have me join... Regular started, but then looked away. James suddenly feels like a real shite. He moved his chair closer. Regular sucked on his bottom lip, biting it in thought as he looked at James with those deep velvet pools, and bloody hell his cock should not have twitched like that, but it did, and he was officially lusting after Sirius's little brother, God help him. This was all Mooney's fault. A hundred percent Mooney's fault. This is why he would go to Peter for advice for the rest of his life. I don't think you're a coward. That's some deep, rough shit to deal with. Most of all, it's not even your fault. Just trying to get the courage to talk to him is pretty brave, in my opinion. Sirius scares the bloody hell out of me. James spoke, softly. Offered a smile. He meant every word of it, especially the being scared of Sirius part, and hoped Regulus saw that, because even if he didn't know quite exactly what Regulus was getting at, James could tell whatever was happening at the Black House was not good. You're scared of Sirius? he asked. Disbelief in every word. Of getting him angry? Fucking terrified, James confirmed. You should see the scars I've got. Regulus sat back in his chair staring at the table in thought. He took a look at James as if looking at him would once again confirm if he was genuine or a liar. So James gave him a forced smile. He probably looked like an idiot, if Regulus did not think him one already. But he was looking at James as if no one in his entire life had ever called him brave once. Whatever was going through his mind must have faltered and the negative thoughts regained their ground. Yeah, but it's not brave enough, Regulus muttered. James was going to shove Sunshine down this boy's throat if it killed him. Sunshine or is... No, James. Look, I'll talk to Sirius for you, okay? I'll just explain that you want to talk to him civilly, James offered. Then you can ask knowing he's not about to be a jerk. I could even be there, you know, as a buffer. That was a good solution. He wouldn't ask for Regulus, but at least made sure he felt safe in asking. That was a pretty big win in general. He's going to say no. He hates me. He probably wants me dead more than I do, which is, like, a lot, Regulus confided. James wasn't sure why he did it. 
but he reached over and took Regulus's hand in his. Bloody hell, his hand was cold. Stupid dungeons of despair and books. Lacing their fingers together, James gave the smaller, very soft hand a squeeze. Regulus looked at their hands, then up at him. Their faces were so close that James almost could feel his warm breath on his lips. His breath caught in his lungs, and he found himself whispering for the very first time in the library. Sirius doesn't want you dead. I certainly don't. And, well, if he bloody says so, then you can come to my house. Fuck him, James said softly. Regulus even looked at him like he believed him. Which he should. James would have to take constant cold showers all winter break, but he'd do it to make sure Regulus was safe. What did he call himself to Remus again? Ah, oh, yes, an overly considerate friend. That's all he was. So we're good. No more spying on our practices? James said. Trying to lighten up the mood, because damn, that was a downer. Regulus nodded, and unlaced their hands. James missed it the moment they were no longer touching. Yeah, we don't need to spy. Your beaters can't hit for shite, and your seeker needs glasses more than you do. Regulus said, putting his head down and returning to his essay. He was such an asshole Slytherin it hurt James's teeth, but he also kind of loved it. Also, you drop the quaffle more than anyone on your team. I do no such thing, James scoffed. Crap, yes he did. He did every time he noticed Regulus staring at him. He did so fucking much these past three weeks. Bloody hell. How long had he been crushing on Sirius's little brother? Well, there was that time in fifth. Maybe it was fourth? No, it was definitely his fifth and Regulus's fourth. The date did not matter. They were in the Quidditch locker room at the same time, and James couldn't remove his eyes from the way Regulus looked in his tight-fitting Quidditch kit. And then he took his shirt off, and the way his arm vein popped just a little from its muscle as he reached for his uniform. Regulus just stared up at him, with a look that told him they both knew James needed to stop kidding himself. And leave, yes, he needed to leave. He stood abruptly and gave another salute. Why the hell was he saluting in the first place? Honestly, they should let you apparate in Hogwarts with how badly James needed to leave. James shoved his hands back into his pockets and trudged out of the pit of depression and learning. Maybe he made a fool of himself, but at least he sorted that out without having Sirius lose his shit. He was sure if he had mentioned regular spying, Sirius would have never gotten to the truth behind it all. And it really was an important truth. If Regulus was in danger in that house, Sirius wouldn't just let him rot, surely. Scary, yes, but cruel, only to Cinevalius. So, okay, maybe Remus was right and he'd go to him for advice again. Maybe. Eventually. James, wait. Quickly, James turned around surprised to see Regulus running out of the library after him. He also noted how it went from Potter to James, and he really fucking liked that. He stood there, running his hand through his hair, 100% self-consciously this time, shut up. He could feel that nervous energy winding up inside of himself once again. He shifted as he waited, pushing the sleeves of his sweater up just to have something to do. When Regulus finally appeared in front of him, he wasn't even out of breath. And he was smiling. James was pretty sure he'd never seen the other boy smile, but fuck, it was pretty. There's another reason I was at your practice, Regulus admitted. He stood right in front of James now. Regulus was shorter than him by a few inches, but he stood tall, and didn't let the height difference bother him at all. They were standing so close that 
James realized that Regulus had the most beautiful eyelashes he'd ever seen. Dark and long, almost resting on his cheeks as he closed his eyes for a moment, to sum up all of his courage. James was confused. Infatuated, but confused. He was confused until the very moment Regulus stood on his toes and pressed his mouth to James. James didn't waste a second thought on anything more than kissing Regulus back. He wrapped his arms around the other boy and hauled him up against his body. He ran his tongue across that pouty bottom lip and took Regulus a small gasp as an invitation to kiss him deeper. His RSVP was well received and good. Regulus's arms wrapped around his neck, and his cold hands found warmth in James's locks, twisting and tugging just slightly to make the older boy groan. Regulus tasted like when you put butterscotch and the salt birdie bots in your mouth at the same time. Like when you knew you'd be expelled if you didn't have an invisibility cloak. Like playing Quidditch in a thunderstorm, and your friends yelling at you to get fucking down, but you just couldn't. You couldn't resist the excitement, the thrill, the high. Without even knowing what he was doing, James was dragging Regulus from the middle of the hallway and pinning him against the cold stone wall. The other boy seemed to have no problem with it, tilting his hips to press hard against James in this new position and, oh fuck, he was seeing stars as they rubbed against each other. Where were they again? Was there a classroom nearby? The cunning Slytherin was good with his mouth and for more than sly insults as he kissed and nipped across James's jawline and sunk his teeth into tanned skin of his neck. James's knees practically buckled, and he leaned his hips harder into Regulus's and ground against him. Regulus clutched onto James like he was the snitch, and he just won the game. James's hand found the front of Regulus's trousers and slipped inside, wrapping his fingers around Regulus, forgetting they were in a bloody hallway, not in the shadows of the Quidditch pitch. Honestly, Sirius could walk up to them at this very moment, and James wouldn't stop because it felt like the hot shower you took after the thunderstorm. It felt like escaping death and getting a reward. Fuck, James. Regulus whined, and it sounded even better than James had imagined it. He captured Regulus's lips back and kissed him deeply to muffle the groans they were both trying to contain and failing. Absolutely failing. He started pumping Regulus slowly, teasing him, coaxing more of those whines out of him because that noise was pure fucking bliss. He wanted to make him scream right here in this hallway. Fuck who saw because- Mr. Potter! Professor Slughorn yelled. Oh, fuck. James quickly removed his hand from Regulus's trousers, but it was way too late for that. There was nowhere to hide any of this, especially with how red and plump Regulus's lips were looking. His dark curls had fallen completely out of their barn, and James was sure his own hair looked like he'd been hit with lightning. He pretty much had with the way his skin was buzzing. James felt his body painfully ripped away from the wall by his ear, like a child with his hand in a cookie jar. Well, his hand had been somewhere heavenly. James swore under his breath at the stinging pain, for even in this panic, he knew better than to swear at his professor. Regulus leaned against the wall, as if he'd been hit by a jelly-like hex, and was breathing heavily, looking windswept and titter-padded all at once. His clothes were all crumpled and wrinkled in a way that made James want to tear them off. As if that had not already been his plan. Fuck! Mr. Black! I expected better from you! Slughorn yelled once more. Honestly, James could barely even comprehend what the old git was saying because he was concentrated on getting his cock to chill the fuck out before students came out of the library to see what the commotion was all about. Slughorn continued on, deducting points and attentions, and James could honestly care less. His mind was thinking about how the fuck he was going to be able to kiss Regulus Black again. But Slughorn was even preventing that, taking Regulus by the shoulder to escort him back to the Slytherin dorms for the night as it was almost curfew anyways. You better go straight to Gryffindor, Mr. Potter, or I'll look into getting you suspended from Quidditch, Slughorn threatened with a pointed finger, pulling Regulus away down the hall. I'm going to talk to Sirius tonight, okay? 
I'll find you tomorrow and... James shouted over the distance between them. To your dorm, Mr. Potter! Slughorn yelled again. Regulus nodded, though. His eyes wide like the moment James walked into the library. But there was a dreamy little smile on his face that James was sure matched his own. Well, and fuck, how did that just happen? James barely registered the walk back to Gryffindor. His entire body was light with whatever Regulus had done to him. He had more energy than he'd even started this whole evening with, and sleep was out of the question. Maybe he could get his cloak and sneak into Slytherin, charm the curtains to Regulus's bed. It was an idea. It was a bad idea, seeing he didn't know the Slytherin password, but fuck, he had to try, right? James burst through the portrait to the Gryffindor common room and spotted the back of Mooney's head from where he sat on the couch James had vacated earlier. Mooney! Your advice, well, it was shit. But I talked to Regulus and he's not a spy. James shouted from across the room. Mooney turned his head quick as fire. He looked at James with shut up written across his face, as he usually did when he had a migraine, but this was big. He could deal with it for just five minutes. James also noticed Peter sitting in the chair by the fire, horror in his face. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Peter couldn't say boo to a Slytherin if his life depended on it. They just needed to let him tell his cute story about how he might have just fallen in love, and then they could yell at him. He just wants to fucking ask Sirius if he can stay with him for Christmas. Which, I said, if Sirius says no, he can go fuck himself, and Regulus can stay with me. James carried on. Which, I'm not sure how that's going to work, because Slughorn just caught me with my hand literally down Regulus's pants, but fuck, he is so bloody hot and cute, and I just want to- James froze as he rounded the couch, ready to plop on it and lay with his head in Mooney's lap to reminisce a great snog like he always did, except there was already someone there. Someone looking at him with absolute murder in his dark eyes. Thank Godric he did not finish his sentence about what he wanted to do to Regulus. James fucking Potter. Did you just say you had your bloody hand down my baby brother's pants? Sirius asked. Sitting up, ramrod straight. His hair was wild, and James's eyes grew as wide as Regulus's, and started taking steps away from the couch. Serious, I-, I can explain, he started. But honestly, what was there to explain? I snogged your brother and he's so fucking hot I couldn't help myself from making him want to come so hard he screamed my name. Yeah, like Sirius would be cool with that. Can you explain to me how your hand ended up down his pants? Sirius demanded. Standing up from the couch and taking steps closer. Well, we were snogging and... James said, still walking backwards. His body hit a chair, and he swerved. You were snogging? Sirius screeched. Oh shite, that was a bad sign. On a scale of one to Sirius was mad, this was a definite the time Peter accidentally caught some of Sirius's hair on fire levels of anger. Why does it even matter, Pads? You won't even talk to him. You call him a pretentious brat, James said. Trying a different direction. Because he's my pretentious brat brother, not for you to corrupt. Sirius was red with fury. His eyes were so dark they reminded James of the canine version. Uh, That was not a good sign. He kissed me first, James whined, trying another tactic. One had to stick, didn't it? Sirius would see James as just an innocent bystander in all of this, and... And you kissed him back? Sirius shouted. Well, I didn't want to be rude. Innocent bystander. That's what he was going to go with. Rude? Okay, maybe that's not what he was going to go with. James looked over to Remus for help. Remus didn't even stand. In fact, he opened up his book again and pretended to read. James knew he was just pretending because he was smirking and enjoying this way too much to actually be reading. You should probably run, 
Mooney advised. With a soft voice like his boyfriend wasn't about to rip James to shreds. If he bites me again, Poppy is going to not just let it go, James whined. Remus did love Poppy, and if they got in trouble, then they couldn't go to the shack with him for full moon in two days. But Remus didn't fall for it. Probably figured James had detention from the whole slughorn pants debacle, and couldn't go to the shack this moon already. Intelligent asshole. Seems like a you problem, Potter. Peter giggled. Of course he did. He loved whenever he wasn't the one getting picked on. Traitor. James took everything back. He would not go to Peter for advice. I just felt bad he had no place to go to for Christmas. James tried a third tactic. Sirius's eyes flared. Fuck, why was not one of his tactics working? Usually one worked. Sirius advanced again. So it was a pity kiss? You pity snogged my baby brother and then planned to give him a pity hand job? No! James shouted. He would at least not go down for that. He wanted that kiss. Fuck, he wanted a million more of them, even with death breathing down his neck. It wasn't... The snogging was after. I, I just mean that's why I was talking to him. I said he can stay at my... Like hell he's staying at yours. Remus, help! This is your fault. James tried again. I didn't tell you to snog him, Prongs. Mooney snapped back. True. Technically you didn't. You didn't say don't snog Regulus, you just said not to hit on him. Which I didn't. So maybe protect me a little here, please? James floundered for excuses. Remus debated it for a moment. Hopefully that pleased did itself justice and saved James's life. Snogging most definitely falls under flirting. Remus decided educationally. All of his friends were assholes, honestly. After tonight, James was going to start hanging out with Hufflepuffs. James whined loudly and pulled at his hair. I listened! I didn't even slip up and call him a cute git again! James kept whining. Maybe if he seemed really pathetic, he could walk away with all of his limbs. And like I said, he kissed me! You really need to shut up, James. Remus groaned, putting his hand to his scarred face. James knew it was an insult, but he agreed wholeheartedly that he needed to shut up, but his mouth just would not do that. It never did. That was what started this whole problem. So my baby brother isn't good enough for you to kiss first, Sirius snapped. James groaned and rolled his eyes. This was ridiculous. Usually when James fucked up something, he could get Sirius to calm down. And then again, he had never fucked up by trying to give Sirius' brother a handjob in the hallway before. That was definitely on the top of the list of James Potter fuck-ups. Even above the time he gave Sirius a flea collar for Christmas. I did not say that! Also, can you stop calling him your baby brother? There's nothing really baby about him. James complained. Because he had a handful and, well... There was a choking hazard in Regulus's pants, to say the least. Honestly, he would pay someone a million galleons to curse his mouth shut right now. Remus glared at him. Maybe werewolves really could read minds. Bloody hell. Potter! Sirius was pacing now. I think I'm going to be sick. I'm going to murder you, and then I'm going to be sick. Sirius! It's no big deal! James shouted. If nothing would work, he would just fight louder with louder, and yell right back. Sirius simmered for a moment. His quiet rage was ultimately worse. No big deal. Prongs. Because I love you, and you're my best mate, I'm going to give you a running head start before I murder you with my bare hands. Sirius's voice grew cold and flat. James was suddenly actually very afraid. I'll count to five. 
One. Two. Five! And with that, Sirius shifted into Padfoot, and James knew he had to run. Fast. Fuck what Slughorn said. James turned and sprinted out of the portrait way. Loud barking followed him and grew closer. Sure, a dog could run through Hogwarts, but a stag? For all the times he made fun of Wormtail for being a fucking rat, he suddenly saw the benefit. He just had to get through the front doors and get outside before... Poppy Pomfrey looked James over with a sour look on her face. Being dragged from bed to the infirmary for injured fighting students was obviously not her idea of a good night. She pointed her wand to his glasses, repairing their cracked lenses and bent frame. Her sour look was even more severe with his eyesight fixed. And you're sticking with you fell down the stairs. Pomfrey raised an eyebrow at him. Even with a black eye and these obvious canine bite marks all over you? <laughs> what can I say? I like things a little kinky, Pops. James grinned wide, wriggling his eyebrows at her. She did not look amused. She turned to Sirius, who sat on the edge of the bed across from him, legs over the side, kicking the air menacingly. Not looking as worse for wear, but James had only fought to protect himself. He'd actually felt a little bad for the accidental injuries he'd given his friend. Then again, maybe Sirius did deserve it a little, since he'd tackled them down a flight of moving stairs. Pomfrey checked the cold compress on Sirius's wrist, before giving a very loud, irritated sigh, and stalking off to get more dittany for James's wounds. You both have concussions, so you'll have to stay the night. I'll save my soul, she said muttering the last bit to herself as she left the room. James looked up at Sirius and winced. Sirius was still glaring like he hadn't just caused James's shoulder to dislocate and forced him to have to wear his arm in a sling for a week. He was pretty sure it could heal quicker if Poppy didn't want to watch him suffer in turn for all the times he'd made her suffer, which, to be fair, was a lot. He could still fly with only one arm, it would be fine. No risk to further injury at all. Just don't tell his mom. You've got a fucking love bite on your neck, Sirius grumbled. His eyes narrowed and he kicked out his foot, nailing James in the shin with his steel-toed boot. Tossed it. James grunted in pain. I fucking hurt. James squinted menacingly, but Sirius wasn't even bothered. He even whistled a fun tune. James, with his good hand, lightly touched the spot that Regulus had sucked. It was slightly raised and swollen, with a touch of pain still residing. Oh yeah, definitely a love bite. He could even make out some teeth marks. What was it with blacks and biting? Then again, he had no problem with this sort. No complaints, except it was probably going to be there a few days, and any time Sirius saw it, he was going to get grumpy, and most likely kick him. Again. Just then, the very Slytherin that made said love bite rushed into the infirmary. When he spotted both James and Sirius, he froze. Honestly, if he kept doing that thing with his eyes and making them so wide, James was going to lose it and snog the fuck out of him right here in front of Sirius. It would probably be the last thing he did, but what a way to die. James, I heard... I heard you fell down the stairs? He said, walking over slowly. Avoiding eye contact with his brother by looking at his own feet. He had fixed his clothes back to polished perfection, and his hair was pinned back in place though James couldn't help noticing a few curls had broken free from his rush from the dungeons. He got a little giddy, thinking Regulus had rushed to see him. Past curfew, even. Little rebel snake. Something like that, James commented, shooting Sirius a look of content. 
Sirius grinned proudly. Regulus stopped by James's bed, refusing to walk further into the room. His trepidation about being mere feet within his brother was palpable. It even made James nervous. Not that James had questioned Regulus' story about being too scared to talk to his older brother. It was obvious that it was a very real fear and anxiety. James moved his hand, just a bit, for his pinky to touch the back of Regulus's hand just barely. But it was enough. Regulus's tension deflated slightly, and he gave James one of those picture-perfect soft smiles, thankful for assurance. Are you okay? He asked James, concerned. Sirius scoffed. I'm fine. Your flesh and blood. The one you should care about, not the pervert who groped you. Sirius interrupted. Regulus blushed so hard he looked ready to pitch himself out of the window. James wanted to strangle Sirius for it. But your boyfriend might need some tending to. Sirius shrugged. Relenting. Finally. Regulus's ears went pink now. James coughed awkwardly. Sirius's eyes went super wide in shock at the words he just said, as they registered. It must have been a black thing, honestly. Not like that! Sirius snapped. Silence settled over the three of them. Not quite awkward, but also not not awkward. James rubbed his pinky across the back of Regulus's hand, making the other boy smile softly to himself while still keeping his eyes shyly at the door. He was so bloody cute, James was sure there were little hearts floating all around his head. James looked up at Sirius and made eyes to him, looking between him and his brother trying to silently communicate that they should talk about the whole other part James had tried to explain before his attempted murder. You know, the Christmas part and helping Regulus out of the house. Why was this always easier in animal form? They had covered the whole bit about the holidays, hadn't they? The whole thing was a bit blurry now after conking his head on the stone floor. Sirius finally got it. Thank Merlin. Hey, Rick. I was wondering, since I've got my own place now, would you like to stay with me over the holidays? Sirius asked genuinely. Really? Y you want me to? Regulus asked. Sounding so hopeful, it broke James's heart. Fuck. He was a goner for this boy. And he'd only realized his crush barely five hours ago. Maybe Sirius's joke landed too close to the truth. James didn't mind the idea of being an overly considerate boyfriend. Well, in a week or two. It was still early days. After a couple more snogging sessions, at least. Yeah, it'll be great. Like old times. Better than old times, actually. Old times were awful, Sirius said. With a grin to match. Plus, you're both invited at Christmas Eve at mine. James spoke up. He saw Regulus's nerves light up, so he added reassuringly. My mom loves Sirius, so she'll probably adore you. You've actually got manners, even. Sirius gave him a two-fingered salute. But James ignored it. Honestly, it was hard not to ignore Regulus's sweet moments. The sassy ones were also adored, but for a reason that James would never share with his mom, it would be a good time. He knew his parents would be excited to meet Regulus and treat him the same way they had Sirius. Probably end up with more gifts than even James did. Sirius pointed his fingers right at James. You will stay six feet away from him at all times and never be without a chaperone. Regulus did his practiced eye roll, which James found absolutely stunning now that he was not on the receiving end of it and moved his hand into James's, before lacing their fingers together. For thinking himself a coward earlier, Regulus sure had a shit-ton of courage now. 
Then again, he did apparently have a death wish. James would change that soon, though. Don't you worry. Oi! I said six feet! And no touching! Sirius gasped, and started to slide from the bed. James flinched away from both blacks, not ready to be punched in the face again. Regulus held tighter onto James's hand, even tugging him closer. Something passed between the brothers that James could not read. Hopefully, it was a sibling thing, because if Sirius was some newfound legilimens, then James was not sure he was going to last through the week. The things he'd been thinking in the library were tame, now that he got a taste of what he could be having. "'You better not,' Sirius warned his little brother. Regulus just half a pretentious, bratty sigh. Barely bothered. James understood everything now. "'I'll give you till five to turn around before I kiss him again,' Regulus stated. Except he didn't even count, let alone wait for Sirius to start turning before stepping between James's legs and pressing a hard, deep kiss to his lips. Far be it for James to be rude and not kiss back. Sirius bent over and started gagging. I told you I was going to be sick. Hey, what's up guys? It's your favorite YouTuber. Anyway, I just wanted to try that once. Um, Sorry for the missed week of uploads. I was sick and I still am, but I don't care anymore. Enjoy the ending segment. Nobody. Yeah, broccoli is the best. Casper. Only steamed broccoli, though. Nobody. Yup. Casper. If it's not steamed, I don't want it. Youngest spawn of the hag. Bot. I like my veggies dry and raw. Woof woof! As they say, bark like you want it. 